Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's right-hand man, is regarded as one of investing's legends. Since 1986, he has outperformed the market by nearly 2,000% with a daily journal portfolio. Munger recently addressed the critical issues in the economy and financial markets at the Daily Journal's annual conference. Munger explains how he's planning his portfolio to outperform the market in the incoming years. But before we begin, make sure to keep yourself informed and engaged by subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell, and turning on all notifications so you won't miss our latest uploads. We must examine the macroeconomic backdrop in order to comprehend Munger's strategy for making big sums of money from the economy. As a result of COVID-19, the federal government was forced to intervene to provide assistance as consumer spending came to a halt. Unemployment can be divided into two categories. U3 unemployment keeps track of all unemployed people looking for work. Meanwhile, U6 unemployment is a broader indicator that includes discouraged and part-time workers. U3 unemployment exceeded 14% in April 2020, while U6 unemployment exceeded 22%. This is a significant sum, given nearly one in every four people was unemployed or underemployed. As a result, Congress issued stimulus checks to citizens and supported state and local governments with various financing facilities and grants. These checks also benefited businesses by providing COVID relief funds. On the monetary front, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates, making borrowing less expensive. The target interest rate dropped from 1.5% at the end of February 2020 to 0.06% in April 2020. That rate is currently 0.08%, but everyone expects it to rise. These measures, as we'll see shortly, are setting the ground for a horrific economic collapse. While the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates, it increased market-based treasury bond purchases or quantitative easing. During the epidemic, the Federal Reserve incurred more than $4 trillion in debt, effectively pumping money into the economy. M2 is a monetary unit that measures cash on hand savings accounts, money market accounts, and certificates of deposit under $100,000. Inflation was finally influenced by the law of supply and demand. The availability of more money to everyone increased demand for commodities, but this alone did not cost the current inflation. Munger is well aware of the rise in M2 money, inflation, and the ensuing consequences. An asset bubble. Problems with the supply chain have also exacerbated the situation. You've probably observed that there are fewer things in stores and that the prices of numerous items, such as consumer electronics, have increased. The difficulty to get things off the boats and into the marketplace accounts for the majority of this. The fundamental issues existed prior to COVID, but the epidemic accelerated them. The underlying issues are numerous. For starters, ship offloading capacity is restricted and there aren't enough chassis to augment it. The number of truckers authorized to work at the ports has decreased. The situation was aggravated by the fact that U.S. warehouse technology lags behind that of Japan, Korea, and China. Similarly, warehouse workers' remuneration has not always kept pace, making it more difficult to recruit good warehouse workers. Supply chains have also been hampered by a labor shortage at warehouses. Ryan Johnson, a seasoned truck driver, posted a viral piece detailing some of the issues from his perspective. He compares the present supply issues to a Costco or Walmart with only one cashier serving hundreds of people. Truckers like him must queue for hours in three different lines before picking up a container to take across the country. The supply chain is monitored by Goldman Sachs and a few other investment firms. Goldman recently reduced their stress level to a 9 out of 10, with 10 being the maximum level. The number of vessels waiting to unload commodities at the Los Angeles port has dropped from 89 from a peak of over 100, according to the Marine Exchange of Southern California and Goldman Sachs. When you consider that there were no vessels 20 months ago, this is a substantial number. That may sound frightening, but there may be a ray of hope at the end of the tunnel. When this economic situation is expected to be resolved varies, although it appears to be closer to the end of 2022 to mid-2023. The main point here is that all of this pressure leads to a shortage of commodities. Consumer prices have reached new highs as a result of this pressure and the expansion of the money supply. The consumer price index recently increased to a 7.5% annual increase. Inflation and interest rates are related, which is a vital concept to grasp. Inflation reached historic levels in the 1980s. 
To stay ahead of inflation, Fed Chairman Paul Volcker hiked rates several times. While the outcome was positive for the economy in general, raising interest rates is rarely politically popular. Even though the Fed is meant to be above the grasp of politicians, Charlie Munger believes it is impossible that someone like Paul Volcker will be able to raise rates in today's political atmosphere. He also stated that this could lead to new problems that are worse than those we saw in the late 1970s and 80s. The late 1970s and early 1980s were bad years to invest in the stock market. When adjusted for inflation, the market returned 0% from 1965 to 1980. Munger predicts a similar scenario, with the market perhaps returning negative results over the following decade. In the DJCO annual meeting held last February, Munger said, quote, Well, there's never been anything quite like what we're doing now. And we do know, from what's happened in other nations, if you try to print too much money, it eventually causes terrible trouble, and we are close to terrible trouble than we've been in the past, but it may still be a long way off. I certainly hope so. End quote. The first effect we discussed was a decade of high inflation and low inflation adjusted stock market performance. There's also a possibility of a second depression, which Munger is considerably more concerned about. The Fed clearly did not want a replay of the 1970s and has already stated that interest rates will be raised. CME Group, the world's largest futures exchange, just released a report that examines market expectations and how well investors estimate rate heights. In 2022, four to six Fed rate hikes are expected, followed by two to three more in 2023. These increases are usually 25 basis points apiece. 0.01% is one basis point. A 25 basis point increase from 2% will result in a rate of 2.25%. The target interest rate is expected to wind up at 1.625%, up from 0.08% today. The Federal Reserve is cutting asset purchases, primarily treasury bonds, often known as treasuries. In addition to raising interest rates, this action has the effect of reducing the amount of money accessible. The Fed cut purchases to $60 billion in January 2022, down $30 billion from December and $60 billion from November. It's worth noting that the Fed continues to buy bonds, expanding the quantity of money in the economy and artificially increasing demand for treasuries. As the Fed reduces its purchases to keep price and yield levels, there would have to be an equal amount of new demand. This increased demand would have to compensate for the Fed's lack of bond purchases. To have a net zero influence on the market, treasuries would need to find outside investors willing to add $60 billion to $100 billion to their portfolios every month. That's quite unlikely. As a result of the tapering, bond prices will fall. Bond yields and bond prices are inversely connected, resulting in greater U.S. Treasury yields. While the media concentrates on the Fed raising interest rates, bond tapering will have a significant impact on bond yields and, as a result, interest rates. Charlie Munger is hesitant to predict that the low-rate asset bubble would burst when interest rates rise. He feels the lower rates were implemented as a last resort during the COVID outbreak. The U.S. is flirting with trouble, and the longer we keep low rates and rising inflation, the worse it'll get, especially now that we have passed COVID and must live with it. Munger agrees that the recent two years of excessive monetary and fiscal stimulation have resulted in the highest inflation in 40 years. Munger elaborates by saying, quote, We've done something, but we've done something pretty extreme, and we don't know how bad the troubles will be. Whether we're going to be like Japan or something a lot worse. And what makes life interesting is we don't know how it's going to work out. I think we do know we're flirting with serious trouble. I think we also know that some of our earlier fears were overblown. End quote. What should investors do now that we know the economy is in serious trouble? Munger is cautious on office real estate, but he advocates investing in apartment building stocks. According to Munger himself, the Mungers have Berkshire stock, Costco stock, Chinese stocks, Thurly Lou, and a little bit of Daily Journal stock, and a bunch of apartment houses. Do I think that's perfect? No. Do I think it's okay? Yes. I think the great lesson from the Mungers is you don't need all this damn diversification. There's plenty of it. You're lucky if you got four good assets. I think the finance professors that sell the idea that perfect diversification is professional investment. If you're trying to do better than average, you're lucky if you have four things to buy. 
and to ask for 20 is really asking for egg in your beer. Very few people get, have enough brains to get 20 good investments. End quote. Munger contends that diversification beyond 4 to 6 investments is not a smart idea. Contrary to most financial professional advice in business classes, while he does not provide a precise figure, he claims that too much diversification produces declining results. Markowitz's Modern Portfolio Theory, or MMT, provides a solid foundation for his thesis. According to this hypothesis, adding a stock to a portfolio lowers portfolio volatility. The swings become fewer and less as you add additional stocks. However, this trade-off has not always been one-to-one, -one, as each extra investment reduces the portfolio's value. Of course, this is based on the assumption that each investment is proportionately equal to the others. Each stock would account for 10% of the portfolio with 10 stocks. Each stock would be 20% in a group of 5, and each stock would be 1% in a group of 100. One stock doubling would have a negligible influence with 100 stocks, whereas one stock doubling would have a considerably higher impact with 5 stocks. Munger believes that the current market is ripe with gambling and speculation. As an example, he talked about the SPAC space, which raises money prior to having investments. Answering DJ Cole shareholder questions, Munger stated, quote, Certainly the great short squeeze in GameStop was wretched excess. Certainly the Bitcoin thing is wretched excess. I would argue that venture capital is throwing too much money too fast, and there's a considerable wretched excess in venture capital and other forms of private equity. And so, we have a stock market which some people use like a gambling parlor. And the transactions of the people who love the gambling parlor aspect of the business and those who want to make long-term investments to take care of their old age and so forth. Model that in one market and it goes out of control because the stock market becomes an ideal gambling parlor activity. I don't think that's ought to have been allowed either. If I were the dictator of the world, I would have some kind of a tax on short-term gains that made the stock market very much less liquid and drove out of this marriage of gambling parlors and legitimate capital development of the country. It's not a good marriage, and I think we need a divorce." End quote. Munger also mentions the great short squeeze and excessive multiple valuations in addition to the 850 SPACs. According to Bloomberg estimates, the S&P 500 is currently trading at a 20 times forward PE. While this is down from a recent high of 27 times in August 2021, it is the most frothy it has been in 20 years. Similarly, the Nasdaq has dropped to a Bloomberg average forward PE of 28 times, down from a high of 40 times in December. This is the highest level since 2003. Given the current macroeconomic circumstances, diversification outside of the United States could be beneficial. Munger has made investments in China through companies like BYD and Alibaba. BYD has consistently been one of Munger's greatest achievements, leading to his most recent investment in Alibaba. He stated his reasons for investing in China, despite the significant risks in both this year's and previous year's interviews. There are numerous hazards associated with investing in China, as many of you are aware from recent news reports. While there are risks, such as legal, economic, and delisting worries, Charles Munger feels that the value in China's financial market is significantly superior than in the United States. Munger justifies his recent Chinese investments by saying, quote, Well, we did it for a simple reason. We got more strength per dollar invested. In China, the companies we invested in are stronger relative to their competition and priced lower. That's why we're in China. End quote. Munger went on to say that there are bad tensions between China and the United States, and that they will continue to exist since the United States does not appear to realize that the differences in government are appropriate. While China's system and policies would have failed in the United States, they were necessary in China. Munger elaborates on this by noting, The Chinese government is worrying all the capitalists in the world, way more than it used to. And of course, we don't like that. And we wish that China and the United States got along better. And if you stop to think about it, think about how massively stupid both China and the United States have been to allow the existing tensions to arise. What bad is ever going to happen to China or the United States if we too are close? If we make good friends out of the Chinese and vice versa, who in the hell is ever going to bother us? Of course, we should make friends with China. And of course, we should learn to get along with people who have a different system of government. We lack our government because we're used to it and it has advantages of personal freedom. 
China could never have handled its life with a government like ours. They wouldn't be in the position they're in. They had to prevent 500 million or 600 million people from being born in China. They just measured the women's menstrual periods when they came to work and aborted those who weren't allowed to have children. You can't do that in the United States. And it really needed doing in China. And so, they did what they had to do using their methods. And I don't think we should be criticizing China, which has terrible problems, because they're not just like the United States. They do some things better than we do. They should like us, and we should like them. So I think nothing is crazier than people who foment resentment. So I'm either side of that one. Alongside Munger, plenty of top investors have continued to invest in China. Some of these include Ray Dalio, Venture Capital Powerhouse, Sequoia Capital, and Munish Prabhrai. Munger believes that the two countries, the US and China, with reasonable honor, will continue to maintain stable relations, which decreases the risk. Munger's presentation provides us with a backdrop of his thoughts. Higher inflation, Fed tightening, supply chain issues and stretched valuations, and speculation have placed the markets in a dangerous position. Munger has adjusted his portfolio to survive these macroeconomic trends by allocating his funds to robust companies. His portfolio primarily consists of five companies, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Alibaba, US Bank, and a South Korean company called POSCO. Munger is not a fan of diversification and has chosen these three companies as his stocks that will succeed over the long term. Let me know if you agree with Munger in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one, and remember, keep living life bullish.